Good morning. All right, so round three. Here we go. I'm starting the 12-minute timer. And now, so Go Soapbox was what I got voluntold to, to explore for our formative assessment time. I had never used Go Soapbox uh, prior to uh, exploring this. I'd used things like Socrative and Infuse Learning quite a bit. So it was interesting to see the different features. We have a teacher in Jackson County at Jackson High that is a rock star that uses Go Soapbox a lot. She swears by it. She presents on it. And so I've learned a lot from her about some of the different options. Um, so today you'll experience the, the student side of Go Soapbox, which is device agnostic. So using your touch tone keypad, no. Take out your device and then um, whatever browser you're comfortable in should be able to access that. The nine digit code can be customized. I don't know if you can use like letters and have like a letter code or not, but I, I just use the one out of the box for that. You can. You can use letters? So I could say oh, Remcam. Yeah. Okay. So besides Andrew, have people used Go Soapbox in PDs before or anything? I use a lot. Okay. Well, I'm sure you'll be correcting me several times. Then. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, please do. No, please do. Once I kind of see that everybody's in there, I'll, I'll switch over to the teacher side. So you'll kind of be seeing the teacher side while you're experiencing the student side in front of you. Um, You'll see right away once you get logged in, there's, there's this confusion barometer, which is kind of, it's kind of known for the, taking the pulse of the classroom. People can, our students can just say, I'm confused. What I don't like about it is I can't see who's confused, right? Is that true? You cannot see who's confused. Okay, so. So confused about this or life in general? <laughs> right, and I don't know. I, mean, I don't know. Yeah, I think the idea is just that, like, if he's talking about something, you hit that you're confused, and so he knows at that moment you're confused about whatever you're talking about. So you could see, out of the 30 kids in my class, I can see all of a sudden 10 of them are confused. So right away, and does anybody still need this? Are we good? I mean, when we think about what this type of a tool is really good for, it's really actually good for direct instruction and lectures. So hopefully that time in your classrooms are shrinking. Um, but, you know, sometimes you've got some slides you got to go over, you have some information you need to present, and so therefore when you can have the kids pull out their own device, make it more participatory, make it more discussion-based, uh, you know, there's some benefit to that, I would say. So what I've done is I've created three different uh, item types, quizzes, polls, and discussions. As an example, you're going to be able to dive in today, uh, you probably already are some of you, in the quiz which is testing your historical and cultural knowledge of Traverse City. This is an extremely high stakes test. My job may or may not be here next year depending on how well you do on it. <laughs> Therefore, if you do well on the quiz, I will be purchasing ice cream, beer, candy. This is totally legit. This, teachers are allowed to do You're this. Encouraging so. us to Google the answers. These, are, these are very Googleable questions. I did not I did not make these ungoogleable questions. So if, if you are so adept at multitasking on your device to find the answers, although you are going to have to live with yourself, Melinda, and, and, and feel the shame of... <laughs> That's right. It's weird. This has not been working all morning, telling me how many people are online. Like It's, it's only saying there's one of you online, but I know you're all in there, so... So when they go into the discussion? Just sitting in the room, it says how many people are there, but when they go into the quiz, they're there. Hmm. That's weird. It's, it is kind of weird. I don't know if it's just about So we'll give you a couple of minutes to kind of work through the question and the poll and the discussion question. Dashes are optional, but it'll work either way. One thing I really like about this tool is that you do have the code to get people in, mm -hmm. but if you can actually give them a direct link to the room, and that'll work too, and you can create a short link if you need it. And so so I can that's put, the way I, I started doing it. Put it into a Google Doc or something? It, it, unlike other tools, it doesn't have the code posted all the time, so people have to go back and show you people get back in. Gotcha. So the... Do you have it? Are you set? Okay. All 
So I can find the link to the... No, just you take the link at the top when you're just in the room. Oh, like, oh, okay. You probably need to go back with that link right there. So probably just probably event the slash that. Code right there. So if, yeah. if I gave them that link, yeah. it would be, it, it's a public link. Okay, nice. Way to hack it. That's good. Now, I didn't clear the results from the last group, so it, it's still showing that a lot more people completed it than, but there's four people in progress. Andrew, we can't find, so far, we haven't been able to find that you can see the results to the quiz in progress without exporting it to an Excel sheet. So I don't believe those are possible. So that's one of the frustrations from the teacher side for me is that if I wanted to do a check-in to see, I know most people are past question one. If I want to see how many people have got question one right or wrong, I, I have to export the, the results to a, a expel, Excel. Yeah, you just click on the plus that's just to edit them. To edit them, right, yeah. You can see live results from the poll, so kind of like poll everywhere, but it doesn't really have any options as far as like exporting to slides or doing anything fancy like poll everywhere would. I believe when you're on the student side, you, you're able to see other people's responses to the discussion, so it's kind of like the back channel style. Um, I can see who submitted those. I don't think you can, right? It's anonymous from the other student side. And so if we were going to bring this up and have a discussion, you guys just read a chapter in the book. We're going to have the discussion. If I delete these, I could just go through and start... Nice. Okay, so it looks like everybody's on with the quiz. So just for kicks, we'll just go over the answers of the whole class. I'm not going to take the time to export. Uh, how many visitors? Cherry Fest? Half million. Half million, <laughs> Half million is the estimate from their, from their official website, yeah. Did you Google it? <laughs> but it's like what ten days long, so I think I don't know how they arrive. I don't know how they arrive at that number, but that's yeah. You think traffic is bad this week? The two counties, Grand Traverse County and Lelanau County. Yep. And I was happy I actually stumped Tina on that one. She thought it was inter interim. The other festival here, Michael Moore's Film Fest. Anybody paddle the Boardman River out there? There's a Boardman Lake, too, if you follow the bike path. And we are on the, the west arm of the Grand Traverse Bay, which everybody just calls West Bay, East Bay. Okay, um, so what I'll do is I'll show you what it ex if I go to, so when you download the responses, it's in an Excel spreadsheet. You know, this is, this is the annoying part to me. I don't want to have to open Excel just to see the results of the quiz and get stuck in my browser and do all this stuff. So, you know, just like a Google form or anything else, you're going to be able to bring up the, be able to sort by person, sort by question. So there are some things I really like. It was easy to set up. You can set up a free account for less than 30 students. If you have more than 30 students, that's where you get into the, the freemium options. We know how much it is for more than that. It's, it's not a ton. It's pretty reasonable for if you're like a power user. Um, like the one teacher that I've worked with before. 
Again, I, I like the confusion barometer, but I wish you could see who it was. I would also use that for groups, so it doesn't just have to be lecture-based. If, if I had seven groups across the room and I was working with one group over here, I would love to be able to just glance at my iPad or whatever and see that group six is confused and I know I need to stop there next. But again, if I don't know who's confused, then that makes that a little tougher. From a student side, likes, dislikes? Compared to some of the more popular ones, like infused learning goes are uh, Socrative and infused learning. Is it a pretty similar experience? You say? I think the one that would bother me is I couldn't see student responses as you're taking the quiz, so I would probably just skip that one. Yep. Yep. One thing I really like about this tool. discussion board where the students could post the questions and respond to each other. While the discussion that Brad posted, he is the only one who can post new discussions, but students can reply to everything. So you're saying he turned out the best features? <laughs> I think they come from The them. correct answer would be I did not know about those features. <laughs> Okay, so can you see that now on your event page? What's that? And now it's giving you the ability from the other students to be able to, yeah, so you to can say which. A arrow up. Okay, up. which is like, doesn't Infuse let you do that too? Is that kind of? No, Infuse doesn't have that. So, right. One of the two has that where you can vote up the. The responses. Yeah, I think it's so proud of when you go to vote, like that's your response question. Okay. Well, thank you. That's helpful. Okay, that was 12 minutes. Thanks, Brad. Thank you. Have a great morning. <laughs>